One of the most uh, striking features of what African governments have done over the past four months is the expanded role of the state, the, the state in general and governments in particular. Like governments everywhere in the world, African government has stepped up to play a role across the board, roles that even a week before the pandemic struck would have been seen as heretical, as unacceptable. But the government stepped up to play a catalytic role, to step in and to say, mobilize resources, to make sure that uh, human financial institutional resources were available to address what's a public health emergency. And this is very striking, as I say, because even two weeks before that, if you have said, everybody will have said, especially new liberals will have said that it's the market which coordinates things and government should stay out of the way. The unfortunate thing, as we all know, however, is that in spite of these measures, African countries could have done much, much better. Over the past 40 years, the state has been demonized and has been told that there's no role to play in society. In Africa in particular, there were deliberate attempts taken, in fact, positions taken to dismantle the state, to dismantle the institutional capacity of the state, to dismantle the social infrastructure of the state, dismantle the cadre capacity of the state so that the state actually is not, it was not in a position to do the things that it found itself being called upon to do. In Ghana, we discovered that to do that, we have to run into the gamble of the fact that we have not invested domestic productive capacity over the past year. Now, the government did a lot by mobilizing private sector and helping to write their, redirect them and focus on sewing masks and, and, and things like that. But it has not been adequate. And up till now, frontline health workers still lack the adequate PPE. So that people are actually going on strike. They are refusing to serve at a time when the, 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 the virus is spiking. Ultimately, this limitation that, that we found about state capacity, state institutions, state resources, policy space, fiscal space, are all rooted in the structure of our society and our economy. Economies which are structured to be dependent in the international order, as people who just produce raw materials and exported them for the purpose of importing everything that they needed. That kind of economic dependence also came with a political dependence and a lack of policy space, which meant that our state could not act. Now, these are the range of things that have been corrected. If going forward, we are going to build societies which are resilient and able and equitable that can command the loyalty of all the citizens so that we can face our, our woes and issues together in the future. Now, to do this, we don't, fortunately, we don't have to, to go outside anywhere and borrow ideas from anywhere. We, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Because it turns out that the very things that we have to do, the very deficiencies that have been exposed by COVID were things that Africans themselves not too long ago were doing, were putting in place, that if we learn from them, we can then you know, you know, apply them. We, and we have the confidence that African will actually do them. And that is the signal lesson that the post colonialism today's project, especially this research, taught us. And again, let me just give a few examples about how the post-colonial and post-independent states acted. For a start, there was the, the, there's no argument at all that the state had a central role to play in reorganizing societies which have just emerged from years of colonial rule and colonial destruction of their, of their, of their autonomy. So the state was going to play a central role in helping to reorganize and, and take society towards the future. But it was a social contract between state and its people in the area of social services. Let's take health, right? Now, it is interesting that in Ghana, and I'm sure in many other African countries, the hospitals that were built in, in the immediate post colonial times are the same hospitals now that are existing. Uh, after years of disinvestment, it was only those hospitals that we have now that we are scrambling to use in the COVID crisis. Uh, the commitment by the government to provide free health service to their people and therefore build modern health infrastructure has stood at the top of time. And it's not simply in health, they need to be water, in education, etc. There's also state investment in pharmaceutical companies, which were actually investing in making medicines. In Ghana, it was interesting because 
the state investment, the state pharmaceutical companies was combined with the attempt to modernize traditional herbal medicine and knowledge so that they can go hand in hand together. But it's not simply beyond the pharmaceuticals, there's investment in many, many areas so that we have state enterprises, state industries, et cetera, which are hoping to build production capacity. In the area of finance, the, the government was quite clear that the wealth that was being generated in their economies had to be used and reinvested in their economy. So they adopted financial institutions and financial measures that ensured that the wealth was available to be reinvested in the economy for expansion. And it's not simply things that we know, like you know, development banks, a central bank that was related to development, but actually credit that was made available and targeted even to the most vulnerable sectors, rural economy, for instance, or rural banks targeted to them. Above all, it was that they also understood that they had to intervene in ensuring that they protected the economy within the international economic order itself. Because after all, the most important thing to have told is that it was not simply a question of building a modern economy. To do that, people have to reorganize what they inherited from colonialism and reorganize their place in the international order. Because after all, they knew, they knew that they want political independence, they have political sovereignty, but that political sovereignty has to be complemented and rooted in economic sovereignty. Sovereignty over their resources, sovereignty over their people, sovereignty over their knowledge. So in important areas like minerals, uh, natural resources, uh, agricultural resources, the stake took a stake in ensuring that those things are available for the, for the people's development. 